<laughs> Big Rich, the legend, man. <laughs> What's happening, bro? What's going on? What's going How you on doing? with you, man? Shout out, gang in the back. I see you. Oh, yeah, it's looking like, you know. We working, Warriors, you know. It, it's looking like Warriors finna bring a ring out to y'all, too, man. You feel me? Much love <laughs> with that. What, what you mean? <laughs> you talking about the Dubs? Uh, the Warriors, you feel me? You know, they up in Frisco. Look, They looking real good. They about to bring a ring. Hey, yeah, we back, man. We back. The Dubs is back. It's finna go down. It's gonna be a good season, you know. They take good care of us, though. We they put us, they put us on the on the um, they put us on the court, on the court side. So we good over there, man. We gonna watch. But how you doing? Congratulate, congratulations on your on your new position, my brother. Yeah, I'm already fucking with the hood, bro. Watch, I'm trying to go live. With I look, the, the, the announcement, the announcement just went through, and look, you already working. That's what's up. Man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it, man. But that's dope, man. For the Warriors to be able to, like, yeah, I hope they pull through and do this. To have, like, you know, you don't give Oakland some rings. You finna give the Frisco some rings too. That's a Bay Area team for that ass right there, man. Yeah, bro, talk. And you know, <laughs> been a lifelong fan. Of, um, my daughter Bianca, she actually was on the first championship team. She was a dancer on the Junior Jam squad, so we ended up getting a little a little ring on that one too. But we're gonna get the big thing. You there? Okay, okay. Can you hear me? Yep. We good. All right. Let me ask you some shit. Um, who was you listening to as a kid growing up or whatever? Is that me or Rich? Might be rich, but he might got his Wi-Fi together, man. I got 5G. Y'all let me know if it's me or is it rich? Because I'll go to, I'll go get some Wi-Fi right now. Oh, it must be rich. So it's rich? Because my shit say 5G on the guys. Bay Area Alert. Thank you, bro. If you want to tap in, too, jump up in here. It's all good. It's all good. Y'all hear but me I now? I was trying to ask you. Yeah, you clear. You clear. Mm -hmm. I was trying to ask you who you was listening to as a kid growing up out in Frisco. Oh, to everybody. I mean, you know the greats. Like, San Quinn. I've been knowing San Quinn my whole life. He's like my big cousin. He actually wrote my first rap. So, um, we, um, I've been working on since I was like seven, eight years old. So he always was my favorite rapper. Of course, Tupac growing up, I was really heavily influenced by Tupac. But I love the whole Get Low players, the RBO Posse's, the 11 mm. the Andre Nicotina. Mm. I was, me, me and Andre Nicotina, we grew up in the same buildings, in the Banneker home. So we grew up there. But everybody, 11 5, um, UDIs, man, everybody. Bro, Herm Lou, you know, like, like I'm real close and real cool with Herm Lou right now, who was like a big legend of mine. But when I got into the community work, um, he was a guy that I really, you know, kind of like patterned a lot of stuff around just going from hip hop to, to really, you know, spreading positivity at the same time coming from where we come from, you know? All right, all right. Of course, so right, Dan, you kind of like a prodigy. JT, the bigger figure, you know? Yeah, you like a prodigy. You was Broom Young for this music shit, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so if you could give like some other young rappers who may not have, you know, the wisdom that you grew up around some some game or whatever, what would you what would you give them? Man, all depending on your situation. There's a lot of advice I could give. I think the bottom line is you got to go all in all the way. It's like, it, it's um every time you stop, I always tell my team, like, every day we take off, it's like you're starting over from scratch. So you got to really go 100% every day, all of the time. Fall in love with the process. When you fall in love with the process, you commit to all the pitfalls, the ups and downs that come with it. So you're not really, like, you're not really shaking up when things ain't working out got to practice that patience but you got to believe in yourself before anybody else do you know what i mean so my confidence level on that even if, even if it's not even if everybody don't agree with what you're doing i come from that situation where i started rapping in like 1990 when 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 selling crap was the thing to do rapping was like kind of corny mm. back in the times you get what i'm trying to say so yeah 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 really believing in that and 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 kind of escaping and, and you know and surviving through the, the trenches of where we grew up at over on Grove Street, over in Bannikers, it was like you know, it was it was the it was the um, epicenter of what was going on in Fillmore as far as like 
the violence and the, and the crack dealing and my whole family was you know drug dealers and pimps and you know the typical stuff yeah so i fell in love with music at an early age and i just you know that saved my life man music saved your life that's a beautiful thing um i've heard you speak on somebody named nunch from sack who is that and how did they improve like your game as an independent or as an artist period Oh, Nooch, Nooch, right? Nooch, yeah. Yeah, you know, like, so I was a dude, you know, back back when I was 15, 16, and my group was fully loaded. I was always a dude that that kind of, like, went to go hang with the CEO, you know what I'm saying? And kind of, I went to all of the marketing meetings and the label meetings and different stuff like that and um, soaked that up. I always wanted to, what I'm doing today was always in the plan. I always wanted to do this, you know what I'm saying? So I wanted to learn and and I use rap to kind of get my foot in the door. And once I got established and I started building, you know what I mean? So once I got in, I was able to really build what I wanted to do. So once we did that, um, I, re I was getting ready to retire. 2010, I was kind of like, that was like my last year. I was getting ready to transition out. Okay. And um, a good friend of mine, new chief from Sacramento, but he missed the fab cousin. And he was managing Mac Dre. He was managing Mac Dre when Mac Dre passed away at that time. So wow. we had a long standing relationship. And uh, we went on the road together. And, I like, he really showed me how to do the back-end stuff as far as, like, the guerrilla marketing and going through that process. Me and Danielle soaked up a lot. And when we transitioned out, we used a lot of things we learned from him to build Project Level in 1015. Mm. Can, you speak on what project, can you speak on what Project Level is exactly? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Project Level, in a, in a nutshell, has been a lot of different things. But right now, it's, it's a hub for young talent. We, we developed young talent from, from, from the beginning and, um, and kind of give them a crash course and hands-on experience within the entertainment industry, right? And versatile to be able to do everything from film, fashion design, music, um, photography, graphic design, all different kinds of stuff, dance and all that. But that, that you know, expanded out to, to really enterprising things and giving these youth actual opportunities to become somebody. So, you know, for example, like 24K Golden and everything that he's doing. He, he started at Project Level where he came through the system of Project Level. Wow. We, so can um, you name some more artists that's went through y'all? You feel me? Oh, yeah. I mean, Lil, y'all know Lil Kayla from Sunny Day? Yeah, yeah. She goes Lil crazy. Kayla was one of our first stars. Um, 72 T-Mac, he's killing it right now. He, he's, a, he's a Project Level day one -er. Um, um, Dex, Dex Kruger from Filmo, he's another Project Level um, day one -er. Um, Lil Kayla, I already mentioned her. We got 24K Golden. It's funny too, because Son of Man was one of the ones, the one of the ones that didn't come through Project Level. He was he was around and, and I've been knowing him since he was a youngster and stuff like that. But we ended up linking up on the 1015 level and stuff like that. But a lot a lot of young successful people that came through. Young producers, dancers, you know, Jasmine Corley, she's killing it right now. She's doing great. She still she still runs Project Level with us, but a lot of young successful people and a lot more to come. A lot more to come. Okay. That's dope, man. Keep it up. Uh, let me ask you some uh, about, like, just as being an artist, how much would you say you have invested in your music career? Just yours, right. not as far as, like, the group. Financially? Yeah. Just a rough <laughs> estimate. Just so uh, people can I'll know. Because some people think it's just going to come to them. You feel me? I mean, not to put numbers and stuff out there, but just in the last, I always tell my crew, I, I actually be on the ass every day. You will be you will be amazed on what we just spent in this past year um, mm. developing ten fifteen. It costs a lot though. You know what I'm saying? Like they say, it's two. It takes two to three hundred thousand dollars to to um to manufacture a hit. You know what I'm saying from scratch. So yeah, we we, we well above that that number for sure. Sheesh. I'll let Luigi say that we well above that number. <laughs> so it's a process, man. You gotta you gotta really believe in yourself and believe in what you're doing because this is um in this game. I just to let y'all know too, this ain't the game you want to get in for an easy quick flip. That's not yeah. that's not what's gonna happen. This is like a um a lifelong commitment. So don't jump in and kind of, you know, expect the immediate return on what you're investing in yourself. You got that's why I say fall in love with the process. Go through the whole thing with it and eventually it pays off. I feel like this is my third time around. I was a rap artist in two thousand five, two thousand six and mm -hmm. and then a community leader two thousand eleven to two thousand eighteen or whatever and now I'm back as a music exec. So it's a journey. All right. And let me ask you something personally. Uh, what's wrong with the Bay and what's right with the Bay to you personally? Oh, shit. I think <laughs> man, it's a it's a lot, it's a lot of wrongs. I think the wrongs though is is us complaining. 
Fuck mm. all this shit. We blessed, man. At the end of the day, we all blessed, right? But it is a lot of problems. But I also think that the successes and the um, success stories are, like, drowned out with the complaints. Um, yeah. There aren't. But one thing I will say is that there aren't. We don't have, like, you know, what Detroit and them is doing with 42 Doug and, and, um, and Babyface Ray and, and all of those young dudes that's, like, winning on a high level. We don't got a whole lot of that. But I think it's also like our, our Achilles heel, our gift and our curses, our independence, right? We're independent um, mindset region. We know how to do this shit. We don't really need nobody. And I think sometimes that get in our way. But it's also a good thing because we know how to go get it ourselves, right? But mm -hmm. sometimes you need that corporate structure. You need yeah. to get with people and partner and learn how to partner with people, learn how to, um, how to share. You know what I'm saying? Like, we know how to get that whole bag ourselves. We don't need nobody. So... Even what we add with 1015 is just teaching artists and how to learn, how, teach them how to have, you know, positive relationships with management. You know what I mean? Like, everybody's a boss in the bank. But sometimes that get in our way. Sometimes you got to know how to fall in line and play your position. I always did that my whole career. I was a, I was Charles Kelly, who was my manager for a long time, or San Quinn, who was my mentor. They loved me. I knew what, I knew what to do. I'll pick up that mic and be a hype man one second. Or I'll be the superstar the next second. I know how to play all those roles, and I didn't really have a problem with being versatile like that. So sometimes we just we get in our own way. You know what I mean? So, Man, that's so I true. would say that's what's wrong. But that's a great thing too, though, because we savages out here, right? We we uh, we know our worth, and we know what we can go get, and we don't really have to rely on anybody to go get that, right? So that that's the, that's the gift. But sometimes you got to know when to go partner and step that up and go bring that over there and add a little bit of that corporateness to it and still be yourself. Don't lose yourself in that process. But we got to find a way to blend it because that's where everybody else is doing. New York, L.A., all these other big cities and stuff, they know how to do it. You know what I mean? They got yeah, Atlanta, yeah. all of these places in their backyard. We don't have that. We have Empire now, thank God. But um, yeah. we don't have a lot of that out here. So we got we got to do it ourselves. So let's design the blueprint. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Um, I hear you talk about Danielle. How long has she been a part of your career? How long has she been a part of your life? How'd you meet? You know, and like, tell her uh, like the story between y'all because like she yeah. plays a pivotal point for sure. No, absolutely. I, I mean, I'll be the first one to admit. I mean, I got a lot of pride in myself and I know what I'm capable of, but I wouldn't be who I am without Danielle. And we, we mm -hmm. met, we met um, 16 years ago and at the beginning of my solo career. So she wasn't there for like the early days when I was in a group called Fully Loaded with Toriano okay. and Bailey. Toriano was the owner of Vegan Mile. We was in the group for a long time underneath San Quinn's umbrella. But um, I met her in 2005 on MySpace, but like I was just in her DMs before it was Damn. DMs. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we met, and it was like at that at that point, I was transitioning into a place where I was scared as fuck. I was a young, unproven artist that had just got a deal with almost like a semi- major label, which was Koch Records at the time. So mm -hmm. my label mates is DJ Khaled, BG, Dipset. You know what I mean? Like, it's like um, DJ Unk. It was a lot of people over there. So I was just this young kid, you know, 23 years old, 24 years old with a one-year-old daughter. Didn't know what the fuck I was doing. She came in and she was that support system. She was the one in there, like, in the marketing meetings, taking all of the notes down, uh, making mm -hmm. sure that everything was, was, was good and kind of, like, assisting me at that point, right? And then as we grew... And when the business came out and we got the MTV and BET run and we did great, we did our thing and the SF Anthem came around around SF Anthem time, she kind of took over as management completely. And her her mind and her her vision, she was like, I always call her the architect. Like, I can come mm. up with the vision, but I give her the vision and she come up with the blueprint. You know what I mean? So that that's how we build everything together. It's like, I, I talk all fucking day, right? And then she take that and transcribe yeah. it and turn it into something. You know what I mean? So yin and yang you know damn that's beautiful bro yeah, can so you uh, give me the story give me the story with uh sf anthem like did y'all tell tracks to sample that or did he just nah. present that to y'all and like i yeah, know yeah, that nah. like as Tra soon as you heard the beat it was like oh yeah it's over now nah, it's a it's a million it's a million stories behind that song quinn ass he got his own story on it too shout out to quinn i'm gonna tell the true story <laughs> what happened so tracks okay Tracks, um, <clears throat> I did an album with Balance. I don't, you, you familiar with Balance? He used to run um, Rats yeah, for sure. and stuff like that, right? But he had a lot of hits of his own. Yeah. I did a project with Balance, and um, and we did a song with Tracks Million down in San Jose at the studio. And um, 
he just loved we 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 hit it off. You know what I mean? He loved he loved what I was doing. So he was like, I'm gonna send you some shit. So about like two weeks later, he emailed me the skeleton to SF Anthem, and he was like, I see you you saying Quinn and Messi Marv on this song. And he was like, but I'm sending it to you first. So if you want them on it, that's you. But just like, this is for you. And I'm like, okay, I'll listen to it. You know, I was on that gangster shit. I, I really was like, I don't understand what this shit is. It's like some weird hippie shit. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I sat on <laughs> yeah. my little brother Kenny. We was, in, we was in my room, like, just like listening to it over and over. I'm like, nigga, what am I going to do on this beat? You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I, I, on, between me and you, I thought the shit was trash. Um <laughs> So we're not really not trash. Let me quote that because I know niggas is gonna screen record this. Or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think it was trash. I thought I just felt like it wasn't for me. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like it wasn't my style. And um, we ended up sending. I sent it to Quinn. Messi Marf um actually denied. He didn't want to do the record. He didn't want to do. It. At that time, we didn't know it was turmoil going on, but he was going through some personal stuff, mm -hmm. so he declined to do the record. So we threw Boo Bango on there. Um, he was he was newly signed to, to street cred at that time, so we wanted to give him some feet. They both did their verses and sent it back and was like, nigga, you win or you out. And it was so mm. hard with Quinn and was saying, I was like, oh nigga, let's go. Yeah. So I wrote the ver I wrote the verse at DEOs in about twenty minutes, knocked it down, first verse, sent it back, and it just went from there. Biggest song of my career, hands down. What 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 was like the reaction? Maybe like you bumping it on the block or having some partners listen to it before it come out. Like I know the response was must have been crazy. You know you had a monster. Crazy. On. It it was no. We went. We we sent it straight to Vaughn. Oh sent it shit. Straight to Vaughn. Okay. Yeah. We we nobody even heard it. We just sent it like straight out the studio. It went straight to Vaughn. Vaughn played it, and the phones lit up. Like from there, it was just like the phones went crazy, and um. It was at that point, it went from, I remember one day, you know, like Vaughn used to do this, like, like six, six top six songs in the Bay Area at six, at six o'clock or some shit. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It was like the day it came out, it didn't make the list. And then the second day it was out, it was number one on the charts. And it was just going crazy. It exploded. You know what I'm saying? And that's what took us like worldwide. Everybody, you know, all over across the world was singing that song. Because if you love San Francisco, if you ever been to San Francisco, if you, you know, whatever, if you're a 49ers fan, whatever it is, they loved it. So, that took us everywhere, and we went. We, we did good. We shot the video. Shout out to E Hustle. That's a record label that came through and and put the seed money behind the record to make sure we had marketing and different things like that. And um, it was it was great. It was a great time. And and that's when like the Bay Area music scene was kind of transitioning. The recession was hitting. Shit was going digital. So you know, mm -hmm. but we but we still did good on that. We did great. So like to an up and coming artist, like you know the marketing, like. Can you give some game on that part? Because I think that's what I know we raised to be stupid independent, but a lot of people don't know that part of the game. It's very important, you know, as far as like really having a bag or just like a budget set up for your marketing. Like give some game on like maybe there are some affordable marketers within the Bay to deal with or whatever. Yeah, I mean, what I like to go to on the marketing side is like when I when I was young, we didn't have no marketing budgets, right? Like we had to really like, guerrilla marketing mm -hmm. get um get posters flyers and go hit every high school football game up and down you know california and really get in the mix and go get it it was analog back then you know what i mean yeah. it was cassette tapes and cds so i'm able to utilize that same um strategy of, of guerrilla marketing and mixing it with the digital world it's kind of like it's, it's like amazing for me i love this shit i'm like because I, I love i love um i love telling the story i'm real good at at, at telling the story and nurturing that story and um and understanding the impact of how psychologically how people think it takes a while for individuals to really um, catch on to something like that. That's what worked with Son Man when he when he first brought when he when we first sat down to do to do this deal this management deal with him. He had already had 15, 16 days of challenges stacked up in his phone ready to go. Right, you know what mm, I'm saying. So yeah, by the time everybody started catching on to it, he already had like three weeks of content already set up. So we didn't have to really worry about people catching on to it. It was it was catching on on its own at that point. So by the time everyone else caught on to it, it was already there. And then we just added more fire. I mean, well, more fluid on it, and just kept kept that fire getting bigger and bigger. And then the forty the forty piece happened, and and forty niners, and now outside lands. And then we do the deal with Empire, kind of like after everything is already kind of solidified. Now Empire mm -hmm. put that damn grenade on it and really blow it up, right? So, but the marketing is consistent. It's, it's about being consistent. Number one. It's like playing chess. You got to really think this out. It's like psychological warfare for me. We be in the ballroom, just really coming up with ideas and just playing off of that. 
trial and error, tossing shit out there, seeing what stick. It's a lot of shit like that. And then having a budget and putting it in the right places. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you gotta say you gotta stay in tune with what's going on digitally. You gotta know how you gotta know how to use your, your um IG live. You gotta know how to use um different blogs and, and what works and, and what's not working anymore, different things like that. Staying staying current. You know what I mean? I think one thing that's good with um with like with um with training youth, I stay young. So I'm knowing what's going on at all times. I got my ear to the street every yeah. day because my youngsters is like telling me what the hell is coming up next, right? So I use that to my advantage to know what we're gonna do next. So you know. It's that a game dope, of chess, you know. So, so how did like the Stunner Man situation happen? Because you said he was always around, uh, project level. So, like, like when did you guys kind of like let's sit down and let's make something happen? Like, what made you, what made that happen? I've been um, I gonna you know gonna goes global. Yeah, I got I got hit to Stunner Man when gonna goes global linked up when they linked up. So I know Stunner Man been rapping for a while, but um, I just knew him as a young kid from Fillmore at that point. But when he got with Gunner and I started seeing the music that they was releasing, I liked it. He like we, you know, we we run into each other, and I just talked to him for like an hour or two at a time. He just tell him like, bro, like the crown is for you. I, I haven't seen nobody with your kind of persistence and your energy. You just got to stay at it. And for a long time, it was like I used to tell, I don't want to sign you. I don't, I don't want to get in your way. I, I felt like what he was doing two years ago, three years ago, was already going to happen to where he's at. And I think that he did everything necessary to get to that level. And and earlier this year, we his his current girlfriend, well, his girlfriend, I want to say current, like it's going to be another one in a minute. But we had signed his girlfriend. She's an actress and a model. We had signed her over at 1015 and um and was working with her and, and was doing a lot of stuff with her. And and then so I just ran, I kept running into something. You know what I'm saying? And he said, he, he told her like, yo, we want to sit down with you and really make something happen. So we sat down a couple of times, just kind of, you know, shooting the breeze and coming up with ideas. And I just kept watching what he was doing and when he was getting ready. So right around the time he released the video is when we kind of made things official. And I was like, oh, well, look, you already did the hard work. You did the hard part. Now let me go add these resources and all this other stuff to it and help explode it. So I feel like that's what we did with, okay. you know, with, with the call to E40. And E40 loved it. He was he was on top of it anyway. So, so when I called him, he jumped on it quick. Um, the 49ers was already searching for the record because they knew about it. And one of their DJs um, is, mm. is close to, to, to some friends of Stunner. They was looking for it, so they reached out, and I helped them close that and make that thing happen. And then, um, and then a lot of labels started calling. You know what I'm saying? And and keeping them consistent and keeping them on the road and booking them shows and doing different things like that. And it just it just like his team is strong. The whole O2 shout out to the O2 team because they they super strong. They self sufficient. And what 1015 do is we try to take that and magnify everything that they got. And I'm just using all my resources, all my friends from the industry, everybody I went through that, that still love and respect me. We bring that in to make this this pop. You know what I mean? So it's good. We just okay. started on that Just to let y'all know, we far from done. He got a million hits in the vault. He stays in the studio. It's, it's going to be crazy. We're going to be here for a while. For sure. Uh, can you speak on 10, uh, 1015 and like, who are the pivotal members as far as like behind the scenes and who are the artists you that you're dealing with too? Yeah, yeah, we got a lot going on. Um 1015, we actually just kind of modified the, the camp. We had a lot of um actresses and models and we got a lot of influencers. Jasmine Corley, y'all should follow her. She about to get up to 100 grand on Instagram, help her get to that 100 bands. But um sure. she she she's an influencer, a model. Um she done, done Big deal. She had a she had a, a huge deal with Nike. She was a um, content creator for Nike. She's worked with Bank of America, Reebok. She performed with Oprah. She's doing a lot of cool stuff like that. So we got in, in, in ten fifteen is kind of like the the um, next level after project level. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Like it's like when they graduate through there, they come through there. But we sign X. We got we got Jordy over here, right there. We got Hibachi over there. Sure, bye, bye. He's a rap artist. He all he also is a member of Project Level and been there since day one. Um, who else we got? We got we got well we we partnered with Troy LLF. Troy Troy LLF is a is already a legend in his own right from the city, but we do a lot of partnerships and he he runs the music department over at Project Level, so he's kinda like our A and R. Um and then me and Danielle's is you know the figureheads, but we got all kind of moving parts. We got we got Chloe, we got uh Mizo, we got Val. We have photography. We got the whole unit. It's it's kind of similar. It's Damn. funny because O2 is a self-sufficient unit just like ours. So 
we got a creative director with Sam. So he designed everything. Like when we did the Fever 21 campaign, we designed every piece in that campaign. We do everything. We shoot everything. We edit everything. We market everything. It's, it's just a, a self-contained unit. You know what I'm saying? So, and it's like a multi-level thing. So we able to, we manage, we manage um, athletes, you know what I mean? So now with college being able to, um, youth in college is able to monetize off of their likeness and stuff like yeah. that. So we're getting heavy into that. We signed a few um, athletes that's on their way to the pros and stuff like that. So we're doing sports agency type stuff. We're doing model yeah. and acting agency stuff, and we're doing music. So we just, we're kind of all over the board. Yeah, y'all expanding. Okay, okay. Well, let me ask you, uh, what do you look for as far as talent-wise? Like, is it a, a worth eth ethic thing, like you said, with, with Stunner Man? Is it a professionalism thing? Like, what do you look for as far as talent when all sorts of spectrums that you be scouting off? Um, yeah, I think we look for a little bit of all of that. I, me personally, I personally look for chemistry. If I can work with you, if I can find chemistry with you, we can do a lot. I, I'll pick chemistry over talent any day. I've just seen the most talented artists not make it because because of they they personality just didn't match with who they team were or who they were signing to or they just didn't have a work ethic. Like I just like hungry artists in general. Mm. It's like I, I get up, <laughs> I literally get up every morning, and um and get to it, right? So if you really can't match me on that level, then we really don't got a lot to do. We don't really got a lot to talk about. I've been up since, you know, out the house since 7 a.m., dropped the kids off at school, went to Sacramento for um for a DJ meeting with all the SAC DJs for Son of Man, Jetted right mm. back. I'm in Antioch right now. We're doing a maternity shoot for Danielle. As you see, my boy Ant with A-plus Media Group. We over at his spot. Waikiki, shout out to her. She styled the shoot. Like, it's just nonstop. And then from here, we got a pop-up shop. We have a pop-up shop on Hay Street this weekend, so we're going straight from there, meeting with the team on Hay Street, open up the doors, set up the whole pop-up shop. This shit is from the, from 7 a.m. Okay. to midnight every day, you know what I mean? So Yeah, you grind it, okay. And you said you said this is a maternity suit, so are you saying she's expecting, or is this is for yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. else? Yeah, yeah, your crazy ass is, is eight and a half months pregnant. Oh right now. wow! Congrats, <laughs> and we said, my guy. Congrats. We did, we did. Thank you, bro. We did, we did, we did three festivals in the last in the last month, and she been full blown pregnant out here, just you know, rocking it out with us, man. She's like, still there. Oh yeah, she rocking. She rocking. She going, she going man. She going crazy. Like maternity leave. We be hearing about. We be like, what is that? There ain't no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like she. We gonna we gonna we gonna drop the baby and then get right back to work. But nah, but it, it's it's been cool though. It's been good. We love we love what we do. It's, it's a blessing to be able to um, make a living off of what we love to do. And like I always tell people, our dream is literally to help others pursue their dream. So when you got that kind of, you know, when you got that set up, then you really can't lose. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, ain't, it ain't about us. It's about it's about them. You know what I mean? So we just want to be that for the big area. I think, I think that's something that we've always missed, just kind of somebody that's selfless enough to, to really get out there and teach them how to do it, how to, like, teach them how to fish as opposed to just giving them fish. You know that yeah, you know that sure. thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, man. I appreciate y'all uh, stopping what you're doing, you know, to come holla at me, man. You feel me? First interview, so man. I, I really want you to come uh, to the stew in the West so we can get this for the YouTube, too, or whatever, man. You know, it might be some of the same questions, but, like, feel it's free good. to tap it's in good. with I'm, us. I'm going to bring some of the team. I want to get Sun over there, too. I want to get Hibachi and Jordy and Troy and, and good. You know, Drake Auto. And we got a squad, bro. We got, we got like, we far, we far from done. We just did a deal with uh with Ronsky and Showy. You know they had the Filthy record going crazy. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go to, yeah. We're going to Vegas next weekend for the day the day in Vegas festival. They finna rock that. It's 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 up, man. We're working. We're going. Man, make sure uh, y'all tap in, man. You feel me? And are you guys still looking for artists? Yeah, yeah. Danielle just posted from the tip fifteen page yesterday. Um, because we live like right, especially right now with everything that's going on. We get like at least a hundred DMs a day as far as like representation. So we're not able to really go through everything. So we just made a post. Go to ten fifteen MGMT and um drop a comment on there. We are looking for talent right now. We wanna we wanna see who the next guy or the next girl is, artist, model, acting, whatever it is. We got our hands in all of that. So tap in, man. Let's 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 work. Let's get some money. Sure. I'm I'm gonna look it up, man, and at the least I'm gonna put it on the story. My personal one too, man. I appreciate you sitting down to tap in with me. Uh let me know what you got go going on. Like, you know, maybe a little hints at the next Thunder Man, you know, single, what this called or anything. You feel me? Yeah. Like, what, what you got coming out? Okay, well, fr fresh off um, fresh off Outside Lands, like, shout out to 24K Gold, and he brought Thunder Man out for Outside Lands in front of yeah. 100,000 fans. That was an amazing experience. 
two days later, he was in the studio with Lil John. We got about like four records in with Lil John. Nice, <laughs> you know. You put you put Son of Man Wild Ass with Lil John Wild Ass. We got something there. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, um, say say to him for that. Um, he's also working on a project with with um Young Junior out of Oakland. We love that synergy. They got they got like a lot of they just dropped a song called Handstand that's doing good. Y'all go check that out. We did like hundred fifty thousand views already on that. It's for going sure. good. Feel you know San Francisco Oakland connection is good. We yeah. gearing up to, um our next collection with Forever Twenty One. It's coming out summer of 2022, so we're gearing up for that. We got hella shit, bro. It's, it's a lot. You know what I mean? It's, it's a lot going on. For it's sure, a lot man. going on. Just, just, follow, just follow my gram. Y'all go to the gram. You know, I post I post everything that's going on every day. I even tell my baby mama, if you can't get me on the phone, just go to my gram. You'll probably know what's going on right there. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, man. Make sure y'all tap in with the legend himself, man. Big yes, Rich in this thing, man. Shout out to the whole 1015 crew, you feel me, and the whole Project Level crew. Make sure you tap in with them. They looking for talent, man. If you a hungry artist, if you know one, make sure you tap in with them, you feel me, and make sure, even if, you like they said, they DMs be full. So maybe, you know, you need to push harder around them, you know, to their friends or whatever, to Gunna, whoever you may know, and, you know, try to get on their radar or whatever, you know. But they Most looking definitely. for talent, man, you feel me, so. I appreciate you, man, for sitting down with me, you feel me, hollering at me on this. And uh, I'm probably going to have uh, Gary Archer tomorrow. If you got no. some time, I'd love for you to jump on the panel with that because we're going to be talking straight uh, independent hustle, really how to – what you should have done before you even release music to where you can squeeze every red cent out of your music as an artist so you yeah. ain't got to do no no shady shit. So you ain't got to kick no dough in and go down for four years or whatever, yeah. you feel me? So, or, that, uh, or, that, or that EDD look and all that type of shit. Man. You know, nah, for real. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a thousand ways to get a bag in this game. You just got to get in and commit to it, though. Shout out to my little bro, Cannon. I see him up in there and shit, man. That's my bro for life. For sure. We own. But, um, but now, nah, yeah, I mean, definitely. I think also, too, bro, like, congratulations on what you're doing. Keep this shit up. You speak it from, you speak it from a perspective. Like, I think the reason why I'm able to do well right now with artist management is because I'm an artist myself. You know what yeah. I mean? So... I'm gonna always be that no matter what. So I understand and I can um I can I can empathize with the artist, but I can also tell the artist, get off your lazy ass and let's work. Cause yeah. I, I didn't I, I none of this shit I've done has been from just just somebody giving it to me. I had to take this shit. You know, I'm a big nigga. Like I, I always had that chip on my shoulder, like I'm finna outwork all these niggas. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's like yeah, for sure. I just keep that on my on my shoulder all of the time. So just grind it out, bro. But congratulations on that, man. Keep doing it. Anytime you need us, you got us. For sure, man. I'm going to uh, tap in with y'all, man. I'm going to have y'all come to the stew or whatever. We're going to sit down with the whole squad. Say no more. Let me know when, bro. Appreciate you. All right, for sure. All right, y'all. You know who this is. If you don't know, this is DJ Upgrade, man. You feel me? On the tap in, make sure you tap into All Bay Music. We're going to be doing interviews. We got Gary Archer tomorrow. We talking big 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 info big gems about how you can as a as a as an independent artist kind of like squeeze like like i said squeeze the most the maximum amount of uh sense out your music and this will get you get you leverage you understand me it's really about the leverage that it gets you or whatever on the back end speaking of frisco hold on let me let me holler at my brother before we tap out real quick is he gonna join foot you up in here on our foot What's going on with you, man? Man, I just wanted to tell you congratulations, brother. I see the hard work, man, you know? Yeah, I'm finna, I'm finna be on niggas' ass asking on, real nigga questions. I'm niggas helmet, nigga, what's man, up with your hustle, nigga? Platform. What's up with your hustle? I be seeing you everywhere, my yeah. nigga. <laughs> you know, I, we got to stay in these niggas' faces. Rich just told you we got to out-hustle these niggas if they don't want to give us the bag, feel me? So we got to come take it. I mean, who you linked in with? Like, how did your situation with the wire happen and everything? Cause like you, you pushing, bro. I see you literally everywhere. L.A. parties, L.A. pool parties. I'm like, this nigga, <laughs> this nigga must be like a triplet or something. This nigga is too many places at once. Yeah, man. So shit, Jay Stalin just opened all the doors for me, and feel me, that just just built a movement from there, bro. Feel me, and it, it been a movie every since. Shout out to all my thugs in L.A., man. All the homies, man. Every time I get down there, they take care of a nigga and make me feel like I'm still in the bay, feel me? Man, so, like, 
how did it, all this come together? Like I see, like sometimes you be with with some folks. Like who's your who's your circle? Who's your go to niggas that you go to on the road? And like, how did you realize you can't bring everybody where you go? Because some niggas, you got to leave them niggas in the hood. <laughs> man, it'd, it'd be hard to even explain that shit to some of the homies, man. <laughs> like the go to niggas that's on the road with me is all the niggas that's working just as hard as me. Feel me? Mm. Everybody pushing just as hard as me. Feel me? So them the niggas I like to take with me because it, it's always a network, man. All we doing is building, bro. Feel me? So I want to make it easier for the next Bay Area artist to hit the road, feel me? So it don't be so hard. All right, for sure, for sure. Well, look, bro, I'm gonna tap out, but I wanted to get, I wanted to highlight you real quick. I'm gonna give you your own IG live though, too. You know, I'm gonna be running and hollering at everybody as I do this shit or whatever. Give me some time or whatever, yeah. but it's been good. Make sure you follow Foots too, man. Real shaker and mover out here man like really be outside pushing this hard line with his music man salute bro tap back in let's work it's good all right y'all we got gary archer tomorrow man make sure y'all tap in nigga all bay hip-hop all bay music i mean